Hello and welcome to part 2 in the Watcher Lab series. In the first video of the series, we introduced Watcher, the alerting and notification plugin for Elasticsearch. We kicked off the series by looking at the basics of setting up an alert. We created a simple alert that queried web logs for certain key phrases that were indicative of a web attack. And when our alerting condition was met, we logged a text message to Elasticsearch logs. In this video, we'll dig a little deeper into the alerting framework and layer in some complexity into our alerting rule. We'll work with server access and authentication logs in this example. Our logs are being indexed into Elasticsearch in real time, and here we have them visualized in Kibana. The logs show which user attempted to log in, at what time, into which machine, from which IP address, and then finally, whether the login was successful or not. We're not really seeing any failed login attempts on this page here, but if I expand on the field, the rough ratio of successful to failed logins seems to be pretty healthy. We want to use these logs to detect and alert on brute force login attempts to gain access to our servers. This will be typically indicated by multiple failed login attempts typically coming from the same source IP in a short span of time. So let's be a little bit more specific with our alerting condition. We want to create an alert when there are more than 10 failed login attempts from the same source IP in a span of 5 minutes. So with that goal, let's get started. We'll start with a blank watch template. A quick refresher. A watch has these five components. Trigger, Input, Condition, Transform, and Actions. To learn more about the basic anatomy of a watch, I encourage you to go watch the first video in the series. Now let's start filling in the blanks to set up our alert. First, we need to specify the watch execution schedule. We'll use an interval option here to run this watch every 10 seconds. Next is the input block. Our alerting condition requires the number of failed login attempts per source IP in the last five minutes. I'll use the search input type here to gather that information from our logs. The request is being run against the authentication logs index. Next is the request body. To save me some typing, I'll paste this query text. The query has two components. The first part is the search query. It finds any documents in the last five minutes where the login outcome was failed password. If you've seen or used the Elasticsearch query DSL before, you'll recognize that this is just a standard Elasticsearch query. And that's again the beauty of Watcher. If you can query it, you can alert on it. But the queries are not limited to just search. We can also bring in Elasticsearch aggregations. Once I have all the documents matching this search query, I want to group them by source IP. This will give me the number of failed logins on a per IP basis. And that's the metric I need to pass on to my condition block. I'll use terms aggregations here to calculate the per IP results. By default, the aggregation will return the top 10 IP addresses with the most failed login attempts. And I'll just stick with that default for now. So moving on to the condition block. We want to trigger an alert if there's even a single IP with more than 10 failed login attempts. Keep in mind that our aggregation results are ordered in a descending manner. That is, the first bucket in the result corresponds to the IP with the highest failed logins. So if that first bucket has more than 10 documents, that is, if that first IP has more than 10 failed attempts, we can trigger an action. I'll use the compare condition here, and I'm grabbing the doc count value in the first bucket of the failed IP aggregation from my watch payload. The dot zero here is used to reference the first element in the aggregation results array. 
and my condition checks if that value is greater than 10. Next up is the setup for transform. I won't be needing the transform block for this particular watch, so I'll simply delete it. Finally, moving on to watch action. In our last video, our watch action involved logging a message to Elasticsearch logs. For this example, we'll be using the email action type to send a notification via email if our watch condition is met. Let's copy the email admin template and fill that in. I want to send the notification to my email account with this subject line. And I'll leave the rest of the email body blank. Now for email notifications to work, we first need to have set up the email account that Watcher can use to send the notification emails. The setup is pretty straightforward and involves adding the account details to your Elasticsearch YAML file. I've already configured the email account and this is what it looks like in the YAML file. When you add this, be sure to restart Elasticsearch for the changes to take effect. All right, so let's go ahead and register our watch. And now to show this in action, I'll run a Python script to generate a fake attack. Since this watch is scheduled to run every 10 seconds, we should see an email pop up any second now. And there you go. One last thing before we wrap up here. Our watch is executing every 10 seconds, but it's looking for attacks in the last five minutes. As a result, I'm getting multiple notifications, basically every 10 seconds, about the same attack. And this will likely continue for at least another five minutes. To address this and to avoid getting multiple notifications from the same trigger, we can set a throttle period in our action block. I'll set my throttle period to five minutes and this will prevent repeated execution of the same action in a five minute period. That's it in today's edition of Watcher Labs. Stay tuned next week for our next video in the Watcher Lab series. Thank you.